and it's saved. Three seconds left. Here's Van Exel. This is for the win. He got it. Jones to inbound. Gets it to Van Exel. He makes a win. Oh! This sends a serious message. Lakers point guard and Kenosha native Nick Van Exel won't play for the rest of the regular season. That's his punishment for shoving referee Ron Garrison in last night's game at Denver. Van Exel has been suspended for seven games and fined a record $25,000. In all, it'll cost Van Exel $187,000. Don't tell people how I live. You know, the first thing every Nick Van Axel superfan needs, or any superfan of any player, is the customary basketball cards. Yeah, when I was younger, I spent way too much money on the damn basketball cards. Alright, I've got the 93-94 rookie season signed ball here, and I've got the Nick Van Axel starting lineup figures. I've got some game-worn signed 2005 Portland Trailblazer shoes. They're signed and they're custom with the little Quick 19 monogram on them. And I've got a couple signed basketball cards in here. There's all my Van Axel DVD collection. Just hundreds and hundreds of DVDs. See, they're like double-sided. Just tons of the games I've collected over my time. I've got a custom starting lineup figure made. Couple more signed cards up here. I've even got an autographed card here on my computer desk. And here in my bedroom, or as I like to call it, the Love Nasium. I got my signed Nick Van Axel jersey. And I got another signed poster here. This is my personally signed poster. To Brad, my man from down under. And here we go with the world's largest, some may say saddest, Nick Van Axel jersey collection. I got a custom made Atlanta Hawks jersey. He didn't even play for him, he just coaches. I got a custom made All Star jersey. They had to wear the actual Lakers jersey in the All Star game, so I got a custom made. I got the Spurs jerseys. He played 59 games for the Blazers. So I got one, two, three, four. Five Blazers jerseys. He played 39 games for the Warriors. I got one, two, three, four, five, six Warriors jerseys. I got the Mavs jerseys. I got the Nuggets jerseys. Home and away. And I got the Lakers. The retro. The purple. Yeah, I've even got doubles. The Cincinnati, 
The only thing I don't have is probably a life. Before I discovered basketball, my dream was to become a professional Aussie Rules football player. When I was about 11 years old, my older brother started collecting basketball cards and put up a basketball ring out the front yard. I suddenly became hooked, even jumping off a box to throw down some jams. So my brother's favourite player is some no-name called Michael Jordan. Yeah, I've never heard of him either. But considering he was a Bulls fan, I had to choose another team, so I started going for the Lakers. In light of Magic's recent retirement, all his highlights were being broadcast all over TV. Magic was a point guard, I was a point guard, and I just became basketball obsessed. So I began playing basketball at around age 11, and soon joined a team with some school friends. Not too long after, I would join a club. At my new club, I was given number 31, and I initially cried because I thought everyone would think I loved Kurt Rambis. <laughs> So my basketball career was underway. My only problem was my favourite player is now retired and no longer playing. I needed to find a new favourite player, someone that I could identify with, preferably number 31, preferably a point guard. And as fate would have it, the perfect point guard was about to be drafted by the Lakers. 13,000 fans have gathered at the Palace in Auburn, Michigan for the draft of 1993. At number 37, the Los Angeles Lakers select Nick Van Exel of Cincinnati. The first time I heard of Nick Van Exel was in 93 when he was drafted by the Lakers. After the draft, ABC here in Australia was still televising a few games from the 93 NCAA tournament. To my good fortune, North Carolina vs Cincinnati from the Elite Eight was due to be shown. So I set up my blank VHS tape, recorded the game to see George Lynch and Nick Van Axel play. I honestly didn't give Van Axel much thought. Second round picks usually didn't make the team or didn't usually last long. I was more interested in watching Lynch, but when I saw the game, wow. Nick Van Axel lit it up, hitting six first half threes. I was amazed and wondered how did we get him in the second round. Zone defense here by Carolina looking to try. Pretty good way to beat it. And he shoot right over it. He has shown us his ability to score. Now drop a dime for Eric Martin. And he knows how to finish off the wing. And that's one of the things Cincinnati wants to take away. Nick, don't show him everything. Good spacing here by Cincinnati. They'll spread you out and try to beat you off the dribble. Nick wasted no time at all with the Lakers, lighting it up in his first NBA game on national television. It was the most spectacular Laker rookie debut since Magic Johnson's in 1979. Point guard Nick Van Exel scored 23 points and 8 assists on opening night against the Phoenix Suns last season. You know, we're surprised you slipped in the draft to the second round, and maybe some people now realize what a mistake that was. Well, I'm glad they let me go, and I'm playing with the Lakers. I'm having fun, and hopefully we can keep winning. Nick was just a baller. You know, some guys come in and they're not scared of anything. Nick was a hit straight away in Los Angeles, thrilling fans with his play and his style, and bringing the forum back to life. By mid-season, he was selected to compete in the rookie game. That Exo with the lob to Hardaway. And Nick wanted the ball in the clock. Six seconds. They want the last shot. That Exo down the middle, spins it up and in! <laughs> Nick would go on to prove that all the other teams in the NBA made a big mistake by not drafting him earlier. Nick went on to average 13 points and 6 assists for the season. He ended up making the NBA All-Rookie second team, and I think I found my favourite player. Nick started his second season even hotter than what he started his first. Van Exel for the three-point gun, he got it! The ball is on the run. Van Exel finishes! 
Richardson with a flurry to the foul. And Exo from the corner. Another three-point gun that goes. 13 here in the first for Nick Van Exo. Van Exo still steaming. Van Exo on the drive. Lays it up and in left. Van Exo down the middle. Underneath. Throws it up and in. Oh! For Joe, for three again, it's through again. Six, Nick Van Axel triples. He has 35 points. Blake has drafted Eddie Jones and signed Cedric Zabalos in the offseason. You know, we had to try to create our own image, our own identity. I don't know what the hell made me think of it, but I just started saying, we'll, we'll be the Lake Show. And it just stuck. With Van Axel, Jones and Zabalos, the Lake Show was rolling. The Lakers were exciting to watch. Nick was playing at an all-star level. They were on pace to make the playoffs. And Nick Van Exel was still hitting game-winning baskets. Perhaps Nick's most notable buzzer beater happened last year during the Lakers' final trip into the Boston Garden. With just seconds to go, he silenced the Garden faithful for the last time. Ball is into Van Exel. He fires and the count of the close. It went! He caught the ball with his back to the basket. He had to turn while in the air. He had to make sure he got the shot off before he came down because he was going to land on the out-of-bounds line. One of the greatest shots in Boston Garden history. The Lakers finished with a 48-34 record and met the Seattle Supersonics in the first round of the NBA playoffs. Nick Van Axel would light it up, hitting six three-pointers in the clinching game four of the series. The Lakers would advance to take on San Antonio crowd. in the, the second Lakers round. The Lakers in the playoffs for the first time in two years. They're making the most of it. A three-pointer would tie it. Van Exel for three. Tied. Oh, wow. The ball is tipped and it's saved. Three seconds left. Here's Van Exel. This is for the win. He got it. He got it. Unfortunately, the Lakers would lose four games to two to the San Antonio Spurs. Irvin Magic Johnson is back with the Lakers as of today. A contract has been signed for the remainder of this season for $2.5 million. The hand is required by the league. Johnson has divested himself of his 5% stake in the Lakers. Magic Johnson returned 43 games into the season for the Lakers. They would go on to win 12 of their next 14 games and the team was looking like genuine title contenders. We started out pretty hot, like we was really rolling and then, you know, things just kind of went south pretty quick. Van Exel will be in the early stages of his regular season ending suspension of seven games following the shoving of referee Ron Garrison on Tuesday night in Denver. The suspension and fines will cost Van Exel $187,000 out of his $1.9 million salary. Not only do the Lakers lose their point guard and team captain, but on the heels of the Cedric Sabalos disappearing act last month, the Lakers' chemistry must be brought into serious question. Today, Van Exel faced the music and the microphones. I wasn't expecting seven games uh, a fine. I don't, I don't know if it was the worst in the head, but it probably was a good Hollywood job by him. But I'm Nick Van Exel, you know, the league can do that to me. Nick would return from suspension for the playoffs, but the Lakers were a team in turmoil, losing three games to one to the Houston Rockets. After the season, Magic Johnson would go back into retirement. He wanted to go back to playing point guard, the position that was now Nick's. Johnson said he does not want to take a back seat when it comes to controlling the game on the court, meaning there would have been an inevitable and uncomfortable battle with point guard Nick Van Exel for the floor leader's role. It was never a confrontation between Nick and I. It never will be. Nick is like a little brother to me. It wasn't Magic's fault. Magic was just like, you know, I don't think I can do this anymore. You know, I just, it's, it's, it's a new era. The 1996 season ended poorly for the Lakers. Magic Johnson decided to re-retire, and now Nick Van Axel had a reputation problem. In basketball, I'm just emotional. I'm like, her, like, let's go. He got labeled as having a bad attitude. Yeah, I think it's a bunch of bullshit. 
you know, stereotypes people give you. People just see, you know, through the camera lens, through the TV, you just going crazy, always jabbing at the referee. Baby has temper tantrums. That's what they see. Van Exel's gone. Van Exel is gone. That's the thing. I can't be out on the court smiling all the time and being happy go lucky because that's that's not how I am. Be careful. There's your team. Wish I was like that, but that's not how I am. I really identified with Nick, feeling exactly like he did. Despite being a good, mild-mannered guy off the court, I couldn't control my emotions on it. I'd argue with refs, I'd drop my head, and I'd get kicked out of games. I was a talented point guard. I hated to lose, but I was hard work at times for my coaches and my teammates. I've known Brad since we were like five. Um, we went to primary school together, played sport with each other, obviously mates. Basketball, a big part of our lives growing up. Beautiful kid, good family, um, really good mate, always there, um, non-judgmental, uh, very caring, kind, courteous, um, very emotionally attached to people, uh, understands people really well. Um, and I suppose it comes through the way that he plays basketball. He's insane with the way that he approaches the game in that he wants to win, his competitiveness. Uh, and then at times it can just boil over and can, his temper can just take control. But outside of that, the unbelievable way of reading the game and, and being one step ahead of the people that he's playing against. A competitor, like I said, a winner but can drag himself back to the pack with his attitude because people will say he's got an attitude problem, but it's just a deficiency in a way to handle his temper and um, it spills over and it, 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 it is something that's held him back in all parts of, of his basketball life. So Nick felt like a successful version of myself, someone who's not perfect, but still an amazing player. This is why I looked up to Nick so much, and I had hoped to grow up and be as successful as he was in his career. The LA club signed 24-year-old superstar center Shaquille O'Neal today, formerly of the Orlando Magic, to the richest total deal in the history of sports. I was excited. That whole summer, I was talking about boys, you know, getting Shaq, you know, winning the championship. Along with signing Shaq, they would draft 18-year-old Kobe Bryant. The Lakers would go on to win 56 games for the season and clinch the fourth seed in the Western Conference playoffs. They would take on the Portland Trail Blazers in the first round and comfortably win the series three games to one. In game four of the next series against Utah, Nick would get into a heated exchange with head coach Del Harris after being benched early in the first quarter. This was another bad look for Nick, and they would go on to lose Game 4 and the series to Utah, four games to one. In 1998, Nick would have one of his finest seasons as a pro. Right is Nick would be named to the Western Conference All-Star team, along with teammates Shaquille O'Neal, Kobe Bryant and Eddie Jones. The Lakers would finish the season with 61 wins, setting up another first round matchup with the Portland Trail Blazers. The Lakers would make light work of the Blazers, taking the series three games to one and moving on to play Seattle in the second round of the playoffs. Nick would have a great series and beat the Sonics four games to one, setting up a rematch with rival Utah, who knocked them out of last year's playoffs. You know, I've, I've always said that no team in the West could beat us other than Utah. And, uh, you know, I figured this is our biggest hurdle. And uh, we have yet to conquer. Nick would struggle in the series against the Jazz. And LA would get swept four games to zero. Nine days after the season, Nick would be traded to the struggling Denver Nuggets. For five tumultuous seasons, Nick Van Exel was the Lakers' floor leader, becoming the spark from the early days of the Lake Show. Through the era that brought us the Man of Steel, Nick was a permanent fixture.
with an insatiable appetite for winning, driving his every action. Nick, time after time, raised the roof when the outcome was on the line. But that same fury also drove him in a destructive direction, creating untimely distractions. Now a member of the Denver Nuggets, Nick the Quick is working to inject his competitive hunger into a team that has been starving for an edge. Nick came to a Nuggets team that only won 11 games the prior season. He came to Denver looking for a fresh start and to prove he is an all-star level talent and high caliber person. Nick would return to LA in April to face his former team. I think it's fair to say Nick had revenge on his mind. Yanked out of the night, a real good rebound by Van Exel with the left hand. A little south pause in the front court. Oh, what a pass. Underneath, he hits Fortson with it. Van Exel with the ball in the front court. He fires a three and he got it. About a 28-footer straight away, Van Exel. Van Exel, University of Cincinnati. Changes direction, goes around Fisher, comes underneath, throws it up and throws it in, and Fisher's in his wake. Van Exel comes in deep, shoots a high iron down the open, scores over Shaq. What a shot. Here's a dribble drive by Van underneath, throws it up and in, he's fouled. What a great shot with the right hand. All right, here's Van Exel. It's good to do that at your end of the court, too, especially. Van Exel in deep. Throws up a left-hand floater, about an eight-footer. Nice shot. He jump shot, Van Exel, three. He got another one. Nick would score 41 points with nine assists and eight rebounds in a near triple-double performance against his former team. There was a lot of optimism for the Nuggets going forward. They had surrounded Nick with a young, talented roster. As a team is concerned, I think our goal is to get to the playoffs no matter what it takes. We just got to get to the playoffs. A cloud to inbound. Bonzi nearly stole it. Van Exel for the win. Oh my goodness. But there's still 1.7. And Nick Van Exel. Van Exel one shot at the buzzer. Yes! 4.1 seconds left to go. Van Exel may have put this thing on ice. Over the next two and a half seasons, the Nuggets wouldn't make the playoffs. A combination of bad injuries and bad fortune had cost the team. Nick was putting up all-star level stats, but without the wins, Nick would grow frustrated with losing. Nick scored a career high 44 points on two separate occasions, and in his final season with the Nuggets, was top 10 in the NBA for points per game and assists per game. The Nuggets were still losing, so Nick Nick asked the team to be traded to a title contender. Nick would be traded to the Dallas Mavericks, where his former Lakers coach, Del Harris, was now an assistant with the Mavericks. So thank you, thank you, and more thanks. And, you know, we plan to have a sit down to, to get everything squared away. And uh, I don't think that'd be hard at all. Nick would join forces with Steve Nash, Dirk Nowitzki, and Michael Finley, and lead the team to 57 wins for the season. They would sweep Minnesota in the first round, but lose to Sacramento four games to one in the Western Conference semifinal. Already in February, Nick Van Exel gave us a preview of things to come in the postseason. Quick showed his desire to take the big shot and make it, drilling a three-pointer with 13 seconds to play on a cold night in Utah. Van Exel off the spin, gives it up to Finley. Nash, Van Exel for three in the lead, got it! Nick at night, rising in the Salt Lake sky. The 92-90 triumph gave Dallas a league-best 38 wins at the All-Star. Nick was coming off the bench in Dallas and thriving in his role as a sixth man. He would be fourth on the team in scoring and minutes played as the Mavs racked up an NBA-best 60 wins on the season. Despite tying with San Antonio on 60 wins, they would be the three seed heading into the first round playoff series against Portland. The Mavs would race out to a three games to zero lead in the series before Portland would rally and tie the series at 3 all heading into game seven. Nick would once again come through in the clutch with a late fourth quarter three pointer, putting Portland away and winning the series in seven games. 
push three in a row, backs against the wall, and and just it's, it's an embarrassing feeling. And couldn't wait to, to get to the gym today to, to get all that over with and get back out on the court. And luckily, you know, we got the win today. In the second round against the Sacramento Kings, Nick would exploit going off with 36 points in game two of the series. In game three, Nick would score even more and go for 40 in a double overtime thriller. For the Mavs, let's fall. Hits another three. Lake Madden. And I really want to send them our best as well. This is for the tie. It is a Madden three. And from down Madden. 16, Dallas has squared the game at 62. Our quarter. Hard to believe the pace of this game at 91 82. Sack in the third. Man, excellent three for Debox. Man, excellent trying to stay hot. Here in the fourth quarter. After the thrilling Game 3 win, the series would be even at three games all, heading into Game 7. Nick Van Axel would come through again, scoring 23 points to clinch the series. For the series, Nick had three games of 35 points or more, and now owning three of the top 11 highest individual point games for a player who didn't start in the playoff. The Mavs advanced to the Western Conference Finals against San Antonio, but would lose superstar Dirk Nowitzki in Game 3 of the series. Dallas would rally without Dirk from a 3 game to 1 deficit to force a Game 6 at home, but Steve Kerr's shooting off the bench would end the season for the Mavericks. Nick Van Exel failed in bringing a championship to Dallas, but did succeed in gussying up his reputation from bad news walk-in to being a pro's pro. Nick the Quick bolts Big D, a new man with a new reputation. Van Exel's agent says the guard's disappointed to leave the Mavs, but will take his team attitude to Golden State. Nick would be traded to the Golden State Warriors in the offseason, a team who only won 38 games a prior season. Golden State were in rebuilding mode and Nick was coming off another knee surgery heading into his 11th season. Nick was disappointed to leave the Mavs but served as a veteran leader for the Young Warriors. Nick had some nice moments in his time with Golden State but injuries would limit him to only 39 games for the season. With Nick Van Axel on the injured list with swelling of the left knee, the same condition that forced Van Axel to miss eight games last month, the same knee Van Axel had arthroscopic surgery on last October. In the off season, the Warriors would look to trade Nick, eventually trading him to the Portland Trailblazers. Action off the court in the NBA, Nick Van Exel is moving out, but staying on the West Coast, heading to Portland in return for Dale Davis and Dan Dickow going to Golden State. Nick would start his 12th season with Portland, ironically playing the team who just traded him in his first game. Trailblazers and Warriors, former Warrior Nick Van Axel. He was booed every time he touched the ball. That's right, Blazers of five, Nick Van Exel. Just loves to uh, bring on the crowd and get them involved and made him like that. Van Exel, four of seven from behind the arc. Still in the fourth, Van Exel again goes to work. Just playing with Derek Fisher with a floater. Nick, after that basket, nodded to the crowd, nodded his head to taunt them. How dare he support him? And Nick Van Exel undid the Warriors with 13 in the fourth quarter, 20 in the game. Plus, I'm just real excited about, you know, this new situation. I'm excited about the team. We can get some things done. Nick had stated this will be his final season in the NBA unless he signed for a team in Texas the following season. 
Nick came off the bench to open the season, but would soon be inserted into the starting lineup. Nick had 30 points and 8 assists against Sacramento, with a game-tying 3 to force overtime. He hit a deep buzzer three-pointer to beat the Bobcats and had a record-breaking night in Philadelphia. I'll tell you that. Yeah, the second half, all Nick Van Exel. Nick Van Exel setting the night on fire. He hit seven threes in the second half. That's a club record. His eight threes in the game, also a Blazers record. Nick Van Exel simply could not miss from beyond the three-point stripe in the second half. In fact, his second half was so intriguing, we put together a little ESPN shot chart. 21 points in the second half, all threes. Well, here it is for you. 28 points in the game. Nick there would be limited to 53 games once again, needing season-ending knee surgery. The year before in Golden State, I had knee surgery. Now the year before in Dallas, I had knee surgery and I came back in 16 days. When I had the knee surgery in Golden State, I tried to come back early. Yeah. And I was never the same. That's you. Yeah, no, you see, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't move the way I wanted. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, like, I knew how to play the game. I knew yeah. how to score. You know what I'm saying? I knew how to do that, but my quickness wasn't there no more. This would be the final year of Nick's contract, and he would be free to sign with whoever he chooses the following season if he opts not to retire. In 2005, Nick signed with San Antonio for one last chance at an NBA championship. San Antonio, coming off last year's NBA championship, were looking to go back to back for the first time in franchise history. I just want to help. I think, you know, they're pretty much set in all the right places and I just want to fit in and that's, that's it. Nick was signed to back up all-star point guard Tony Parker to come in and provide scoring and leadership off the bench and for his playoff experience. This was sure to be Nick's final chance at an NBA championship. Coming off off-season knee surgery, I knew if I was ever going to see him play live, I'd have to do it now. My friend John got to organizing the trip. We added friends Alex and Chris, and I was on my way to see Nick play live. So here we go, off from my hometown of Adelaide, Australia, to San Antonio to see Nick Van Axel play two games live. The first against Detroit, the second against Memphis. This will be amazing, a rematch of last year's NBA Finals and to realize my dream of seeing Nick Van Axel play live. Look how happy I am, even though I'm in the nosebleeds. And Nick even knew I was coming. Dramatization may not have happened. Nick had some great highlights but unfortunately went down 83 to 68 to Detroit. On to Memphis. Come on Nick, drop 50 this game for me. Welcome back AT&T Center's first basketball. First 27-9 following the loss to Detroit 83-68. And the Grizzlies from Memphis check in at 23-11. Here we are for the second game against Memphis. My friend snuck in his little digital camera so we're able to get some better photos and videos for this one. The fortunate thing about seeing the Spurs play against Memphis is getting to see Nick's former teammate, Eddie Jones, play for Memphis. Damn, that would have been nice if that three had dropped. Yeah, 
Only 48 more points to go to reach 50 now. Here we go, one point game with eight seconds left. And Nick's on the court. Could he really hit one last buzzer beater for his career in front of me while I'm there? Only rebounds this time. Alley oop it. Duncan. Got it. Spurs now lead with 6.7 to go. Oh my. How about that for a change of pace? And they play a dandy here tonight. 80 to 79. San Antonio the winner. And the Spurs avoid the back-to-back -back home losses. No clutch shot from Nick this time, but wow, what a game. A one-point thriller. What a dream come true to see Nick Van Exel play twice. But unfortunately, I didn't get to meet him. I didn't get close. I wonder if I'd ever get to meet him. Upon arriving home in Australia, the Spurs continued to roll through the regular season. Led by the big three of Tim Duncan, Manu Ginobili and Tony Parker, Nick would only start two games and record career-low numbers across the board. Nick was bothered by bone spurs in his shooting elbow and surgery would require him to miss the rest of the regular season. Nick would opt to have cortisone injections instead to be able to play out the season as the Spurs would go on to record 63 wins. In the first round of the playoffs, they would face and eliminate the Sacramento Kings in six games. In the second round, Nick would face Dirk Nowitzki and his former team, the Dallas Mavericks. The series was close throughout, with the Spurs coming back from a 3-1 deficit to force Game 7. The game would go to overtime, but the Mavs were too strong, defeating them and eliminating them from the playoffs. The celebration is on in Dallas. And 18-7, Dallas won since San Antonio took that three-point lead. They win in overtime, 119-111. As expected after the season, Nick would retire. Happy trails, Nick Van Exel. There are reports in San Antonio that you're going to retire. In his 13th season, Nick the Quick wasn't all that quick anymore. He averaged only five points a game for the Spurs and clearly could not prevent them from being bounced out of the playoffs by the Mavericks. Not now, but Nick was pretty good in his prime. And Tony, yes. I thought Nick had already said, I was pretty certain he said, hey, this is it, this is the last Earlier year. Earlier in the year, he Nice said career for him. After 13 NBA seasons, countless knee surgeries and an injured elbow, Nick knew his body had failed him. Nick would retire sixth place all time in three pointers made, a former NBA All Star, but having missed out on what he wanted most an NBA championship. After announcing his retirement, Nick would retreat to the golf course for a well earned break. I myself was still working on the bucket list. I had created several years earlier. I had achieved my first dream of going to an overseas trip to America and seeing Nick play live. I wanted to see a New York Jets game live in person. The most challenging one at the time was to win a footy premiership. My team lost in 2006 and again in 2008, losing that one in the final minute of the game. In 2010, I quit my job and was in a funk. I was depressed and lacking motivation. My girlfriend at the time suggested the thought of going back to America. I loved the idea, and once I was back working, I was now motivated to enjoy the holiday of a lifetime and try again to meet Nick. In 2009, Nick got into coaching, joining Texas Southern University as an assistant coach. In the off-season of 2010, he joined the Atlanta Hawks as the player development instructor. Uh, it's a great opportunity. You know, I got into coaching last year at Texas Southern University, Houston, Texas, and uh, I liked it. I liked it a lot. And uh, Larry Drew got the job and sent him a text asking if he had anybody uh, working out uh, the guards. And here I am. As all of this was happening, I was busy planning the holiday and had a February 4 match in Atlanta against the Clippers picked out to try and meet Nick. We would leave Australia and arrive in beautiful Hawaii on January the 27th and stay five nights before heading to LA. We stayed two nights in LA seeing a Lakers game the first night and courtside seats for the Clippers Bulls game the following night. Now it's go time. The time has arrived to jump on the plane and fly to Atlanta. 
we were given seats 31A and 31B and 31 being Nick's playing number so hopefully a good sign. We arrived the day before the game so we had some time for some sightseeing beforehand. When we arrived at Phillips Arena, we met up with Joe, a Hawks employee who had arranged early entry for us. He got us in and walked us courtside along the baseline where Nick was on the court working out Jeff Teague and Jordan Crawford. So we're about three rows up from the baseline. I was wearing my Cincinnati jersey. Nick looked up, saw my Cincinnati jersey, gave a little greeting. Finished his on court workout with the players, which took about another minute or two, and then he walked up and shook my hand. I introduced myself, said I was from Australia, that I was over currently on a holiday. He asked about our holiday and how that was going so far. Then I got my poster out, I asked if he could sign my poster, and I said, Oh, can you write, you know, a little cool saying on it? So I wrote Super Ape, my man from down under, and then signed it for me. He posed for a couple of photos. And yeah, it was chatty, spent about a minute or two with him and he was really nice and really friendly. Yeah, it was really, you know, a dream come true and really a great experience. Now, on to the game. What a game it was. Jamal Crawford was on fire. By eight in this third. Jamal again. Good! <laughs> He's His third three-pointer of the quarter. Saw some amazing dunks and the Hawks won by a point at the buzzer on a pair of Al Crawford free throws. Oh, I had the chance to get a bunch of merch got a custom Hawks Van Axel jersey and bought a Josh Smith and team signed ball. What an absolutely amazing perfect night. Once we arrived back from the States, about a month later a family member of Nick's emailed me. They had seen my website with all of my games collection listed and Nick wanted copies. My 30th birthday was in June and along with a bunch of Hawks gear he sent, Nick sent me this video for my party. Happy 30th birthday, man. It's your boy Nick Van Exel. Congratulations to you and your girl, Lee. Hope you all have a great life together, man. Have a good birthday, man, and many more. Don't treat me like you. If you do, treat me like The following year, I would get married and buy my first house. Even created a mini court out the back. In 2014, my first son, Nick, was born, and life was going great. I started playing Gridiron again, hoping to win that Premiership finally. We made two Grand Finals, but unfortunately lost them both, meaning I'm now 0-4 in Grand Finals, and I really started wondering if I'd ever win one. In 2015, I had a baby daughter named Adeline, who passed away after five hours. Life became difficult dealing with grief, and less than a year later we had twins Ryan and Peyton. As Adeline passed away in my arms, I told her I would win a premiership for her. And in 2018, after another grand final lost the year before, I'd finally win one. For good measure, we went back to back in 2019. I had achieved everything on my bucket list, but unfortunately, my marriage would fail and once again fall into a dark place. I still remain friendly with my ex, and she is a great mother to my kids. I just don't think she could handle being with a ladies man and was jealous over all the other women chasing me. <laughs> Alright, that might be an exaggeration. In 2020, I bought my own little place and learned a very valuable lesson about being grateful for what you have and focus on the good rather than the bad. I've done some amazing things in my life I've traveled to America twice, seen Nick play and got to meet him, and I've met some of the world's best basketball players and seen them play live.
I even got to meet and play against Kyrie Irving. I'm grateful that at age 41, I can still play basketball and move well. What I'm most thankful for is my three beautiful children. They give me so many laughs and so much unconditional love. I have my eldest Nick, who's eight and just started playing basketball last year. He is a pesky little defender and a great passer, just like his old man. Next is my six-year-old boy Ryan, my little Bronny James, and can throw a log. Yeah! Ryan's my little comedian, and he already has a deadly little jump shot. Then there's my daughter Peyton. She's such an affectionate, loving, clever little girl, whose dream is to be a singer and a YouTuber. As for Nick, he moved on from Atlanta to become an assistant for Milwaukee, then Memphis, head coach of the Texas Legends G League team, and back to Atlanta as an assistant. And last but not least of my memorabilia collection, I didn't show this earlier because it kind of gives it away, but I sent off my photo with Nick to get signed and he personally signed it for me. So that's definitely one that I think is pretty cool. I've even got Nick as a follower on Twitter and he gives me some birthday love. So in conclusion, I wanted to make a movie to go into detail about Nick's career. I also wanted to explain why he was my favourite player and why I chose Nick. I wanted to make a movie that my kids could eventually watch and they could learn and understand a bit about Nick, a bit about myself and my basketball career and my journey and my life. And I wanted to make a movie mainly about positivity. I really wanted to go into detail about the time when I got to see him play, about when I got to meet him about my football premierships, about the things in life, the good things, the things that you're grateful for. I've done some amazing things in my life and I'm really fortunate and I'm really grateful. And I wanted to make a movie about that. So I want to thank all my subscribers and followers on my channel. And there's one last thing I'm going to leave you with. And now, even at 41 years old, I still want to be just like Nick.